exported. Okay, got it. Then we're all set. Let me just start um, sharing my screen. Let me just take this. Uh, hang on. Let me just wait for Facebook Live to go through just to make sure. Okay, we're in. So perfect. Let me just share my screen. And let me just go to the Tech Medics sub account. Okay, got it. So thank you guys for jumping on with me. So our discussion for today will be about the new updates we got for calendars and also for courses. So first, let's go to the calendars. So when I go to calendars and uh, when you're going to maybe update some of the existing paid characters you got here or maybe create your own. Uh, this um, exact enhancement is now available for everyone. So let me just maybe choose, uh, maybe let's just create a whole new calendar. So you can choose, this is applicable to any of the calendars we got as of the moment, but in my case, I'll just use a round robin one. Um, the calendar name could be like any calendar name. So if you guys haven't uh, had the chance to create your calendar, you can definitely follow along to set it up. So let me just maybe call this calendar uh, one hour, um, one in one session with Nath. Let's have, for example, um, session with Nath. For the descriptions, you can definitely add description, but I'll just add it later on. And then for the team members, you can definitely choose whichever team members for a round robin, for, but for the other calendars, this will not be available. So I'll just choose myself. For the custom UR, <clears throat> for the custom URL or um, calendars log, for those who didn't know, uh, the custom URL is basically the link for your characters. So if you want to add a link after the calendar that you got here, this is where you're going to add it. So in my case, I'll just call it um one on one with math maybe i'll just do it like that so that would be my slog and for the duration for the call since this is one hour i'll set it for 60 minutes uh, for the availability this is where we're going to set it up and then you're going to um, accept payments because this ex uh, exact enhancement is applicable for paid calendars so just accept payments and as you can see you are actually you can see any like um customization you can do where you can add the partial payments is it because you need to go to advanced settings to fully set it up so just click on advanced settings and it will now look like this uh, our calendar builder will get i'll uh, give you like different menus on the left hand side to set up your full calendar so the meeting details will be the um the basic information about the meeting availability will be your available hours Forms and payments, if you want to customize the forms to your calendars and also to want to collect payments. Mm -hmm. Notification is for the calendar, in, calendar invite and the um, primary acknowledgement email that your users and you will receive when someone books in. And lastly, customization. So let's go with meeting details first. For the calendar logo, you can definitely upload a logo that you have in your computer that will be your calendar logo. But I'll just skip all this part right here because this is pretty much a uh, basic can definitely fill it in with the descriptions and stuff like that. And for the users of this calendar, you actually have the option to um link your Zoom account so that whenever there's a um appointment you got from the calendar, automatically Zoom will create a unique meeting room for that meeting on your Zoom account. Or if you don't have any uh if you don't want to use that, you can definitely just Put it in custom and put in your personal meeting room from Zoom into this location. Or if you are meeting people um, personally or face-to-face, -face, you can definitely put your full address right here. It will actually get the full address you set up on your business profile. But if you think you have like different address for different calendars, you might need to customize this one. You can just delete the custom value and add in the actual address that you got. You can also do phone call here. You can also do Google Meet. Or if you have any other web conferencing app, you can also use them. So yeah. So I'll just save this, uh, whatever I did, so we can go back. Um, we can be redirected to the availability. So for the availability uh, availability for you guys who have 
uh, maybe problems with your appointments not showing up and stuff like that, maybe please send me an email at supportattackmedics.com because there will be some prerequisite that we need to do first before we could um, test your, uh, your calendar availability. Because aside from the availability right here, we also have availability set for business profile and for individual profile who are using the TechMedics um, for the user for your TechMedics account. So we might need to check on that one too. So and if you have uh, calendar problems, please maybe uh, put a comment to the chat or you can just email me at supportattechmedics.com so we can look into it. So yeah. So if you guys have any questions, just put it on the chat or you can raise your hands so we can attend to it. So yeah, so for the availability, you can choose whatever time um, that you are available and you can actually add broken time. So for example, you're available from 8 a.m. to 5 and then you'll be maybe available from 7 p.m. to 10 and stuff like that. You can definitely add more times into your availability depending on how you're going to set it up. And then if it's recurring, it could be like maybe a, recur uh, a daily recurring, monthly recurring or weekly recurring. You can definitely tear this on, but we actually have some limitations in this one currently. But what we can do is we can set uh, limitations and how many times it can repeat. And also, uh, yeah, this will be for the available slot. This would be, um, yeah, this is self-explanatory. So I'll just take that off because I don't want that. And for the meeting interval, meeting duration, this is where you're going to set it up. We actually have a new update, which is for the post buffer time and uh, pre-buffer time. So you can now add rest times before and after the appointments. If you, don't, if you don't want that, you can definitely just leave it as blank. But if you want to have buffer time before and after your appointment, please specify it in this section right here. So I'll just save this menu because I don't have to uh, edit much about it. And then here we go on forms and payments. So by default, our calendar actually has its own form to take all the information about the booking. But you guys can also customize the form attached to your calendar by creating a form first and then going back into your calendar and in this drop down, look for the form that you have created so you can have a customized intake form for your uh, bookings and appointments. So yeah. And then if you think that your bookings could uh, maybe your clients might be using this booking link multiple times or they'll be able to maybe use it from time to time. We want you to maybe turn on the sticky contact on because whenever they receive a link from you to fill in or maybe a form link, a calendar the link and stuff like that, those forms will be automatically pre-filled with, well, uh, with their default information, name, phone number, email, so don't, they don't have to type again. So you need to turn on sticky contact for that if you want to maybe make it like easier for your clients to fill out the form. So yeah. And for the consent, this is for the checkbox. I'll show you how it works in a bit. And you can also add guests. So if you think this booking, uh, you can definitely maybe allow the people who booked in with you to like get people with a meeting and stuff like that. You can definitely turn on add guests so they can also include their guests into that meeting and they can be uh, sent a calendar invite. So yeah, so I'll just turn it off because I don't need that. And for the thank you message, this is a thank you message that will show up after the booking has been made. If you don't want your phone number to show up, I suggest to take this out or you can maybe just replace it. Please email me at this email and stuff like that if you don't want people to be calling your phone number. So yeah, so please be mindful with this contact method right here. You might need to update that if you're setting up your character. And lastly, for the payment, this is where we're currently at. So for example, I'll be collecting $100 per hour for this appointment. And um, I would like to maybe uh, collect partial payments. So partial payments, you have the option to have a flat amount. So for example, for the $100, I want to collect $30 uh, reservation fee for that appointment. You can definitely put 30 here so that whenever people book into this calendar, uh, primarily they will be uh, charged for $30 for that partial payment or for that reservation fee and then the other 70 will be charged to them or will be invoiced to them but you actually have to manually collect that invoice because it depends on you on how you're going to collect the payments so it could be after the service has been made after or maybe before the service has been uh will be like you know will, will start and stuff like that because it really depends on you on how you're going, going to collect the payments afterwards so yeah 
And then you also you can also have percentage. You can have 50% um, partial payment, depending on how you're going to have the per uh, partial payment for your invoice. I'll just maybe do 30 uh, for now. And then for the description, you can, this is a heads up for them on how uh, or what would be the charge for the uh, booking. So maybe I'll do, uh, you will be billed 30 uh, USD for this appointment. And we will invoice you for the rest of 70 and stuff like that. So you definitely put that note in there so you can have a description of booking. Uh, on my uh, for this like session, I'll just put this on test because we're going to test it so I can uh, show you guys how it works. So I'll just put it on test. I'm just going to save it. And then after that, let me just try to check. So yeah, so I already save it. And then this menu right here, this will be for the acknowledgement and additional options. So first... If you want to, because currently we only have acknowledgement email, acknowledgement email will be the email that your clients and you will also receive when someone books in a call with you. So this is a primary notification that some you have a booking with this client for this time and this time and stuff like that. So if you want to receive uh, for your client to receive an acknowledgement emails after they book in, choose contact in. And also, if you, as the assigned user of the calendar, if you want to receive an acknowledgement email for the booking, you can also turn this on. So, yeah. But just a heads up, you also have this in workflow. This won't replace all the reminder emails that will go out for your appointments. So, this is just an acknowledgement email. The email that they receive after their uh, booking is just acknowledgements for the booking. And it's not firing out any reminders. So, you guys need to still... Um, do you or like set up your workflow for the booking reminders in order for your clients to be reminded for the booking with you? So yeah, so we can also maybe discuss about it later on. So yeah, I can also add additional emails if you want. If you want, to, if you have a default, uh, maybe person that you want to receive your bookings or manage your bookings and stuff like that. And then in here we actually have a calendar invite that can be sent from Google and Outlook. So if you want to uh, send out current invites to the clients who booked a call with you, you need to turn this on. So yeah, so I don't turn that on most of the time, but yeah. And if you also won't allow to have people reschedule their call, you can also turn this off. So I'll just save this page right here so we can go back, uh, we can go to the customization. For the customization part, this is where you can update the color scheme for your characters. So we actually have it, I think like three months ago. So I'll just maybe change my primary color into pink. Yeah, so let me just do that. And I'll just save. And you can now see how our um, calendar will look like with a partial payments on. Let me just try to look for the calendar that I just created. Okay, I think this is the one. So to get the calendar link, you, you guys just need to click on the three dots. If you have a calendar that's actually... Um, deactivated you might need to click on activate again in order for you to use it and also at the same time if you have an active calendar that you want to deactivate you can also just click on the three dots and deactivate the calendar if you are no longer using the calendar so yeah so i'll just click on share and if you guys have maybe external websites like Wix, WordPress, and stuff like that you can actually grab our embed code to be embedded to your website page but for the scheduling link, I just want to have the link. Uh, I just need to go to scheduling link and copy this permanent link right here. Open it in a new tab. And this is how the booking link looks like with a partial payment um, option on. So yeah. So for example, I'll choose a date here for 9.30 a.m. For example. And then on the left-hand side, you will now see that the total amount for this booking is 100 but they will be paying $30 now upon booking. And also, this will be where the description is. So you guys can also maybe specify it on how you're going to collect the payments afterwards after the $30 um, like collections. You, it depends on you how you're going to collect it. And currently, this is in test mode because I said it in test mode. So you, we, can, uh, we can test it during our session. But after you have tested the calendar, I really, really suggest that you need to put this in publish. Afterwards, you just need to go to your calendar and put this on live, especially if you're going to put this link live to everyone. 
and to have people book in a call with you, you need to get that link. Um, I mean, that mm. toggle turn on. So yeah. And when your uh, checkout is currently in test mode, you can just head over to Stripe test code. You can just look up this uh, exact keyword, test codes, to get this t uh, the test codes from Stripe. So you can actually test out how it would work if you're going to do this type of like checkout or what will happen if someone books and call with you and pay for $30 and stuff like that. So this will be the first documentation we got here. So just click on that. You need to scroll down. And these are the test cards that you can use. I'll just use this one because, uh, no, maybe I already used that earlier. Maybe I'll just use this one. Go here, fill out the uh, all the information. So let me just fill it in. Um, yep, let me just put that number there. Test, confirm. And then for the card number, it would be the card number you copied from test code from Stripe. Mm -hmm. And for the month, uh, for the CVC and future date, it would be any future date. And for the CVC, it would be any three numbers. So let me just put whatever number I can think of. Just click on schedule meeting. And we now have the thank you or confirmation uh, message afterwards. So let's just wait for that. Mm -hmm. okay so this is how the thank you message will look like so again it's showing my phone number so if you don't want to have that on your end please update your um information about the thank you message for your calendars so yeah so we now have it so to check all the transactions uh for those partial payments you need to go to payments here and then that transaction will show up into here. But the transaction that will show up here would be um, the primary charge or the first charge you got. This is actually not the test we did just now. This is actually what I did maybe like 30 minutes before. I mean, 30 minutes ago, because it might take around like five to 10 minutes for the transaction to show up into your Techmatics uh, transaction tab. So the first payment for the partial payments will go into the transa uh, transaction. And the remaining balance will automatically go to invoice. But that invoice will be actually put into draft. So you guys, oh, this is actually what we did earlier. So what you need to do is you need to actually manually send it. So if you're okay with, if you have like you have like invoice template and stuff like that, you should be all good to uh, uh, like send it automatically. But you can just click on edit and send it and you can also uh yeah so you basically can just send it and you can set your own uh deadline for this exact uh invoice so yeah so it depends on you and how you're going to collect the remaining balance for that appointment so yeah we have a question here yeah we actually have recorded this call ronnie so we'll have this uh call uploaded to our uh youtube uh channel so yeah any questions so far about our, uh, those process? Any? Yep, all good. So, yes, yeah, so I think you should be all good now. So, after our calendars, this is just maybe a quick uh, recap. But for you guys who are, like, building your calendars and want to send out reminders, all the reminders for the calendars can be done inside our workflow. So, all the automations, all the magic happens for Techmatics is actually coming from the workflows. So if you're not familiar with the workflows, we have a lot of trainings on our YouTube channel about how to use our workflows and stuff like that. And also on your Techmatics tab, you also have this chat widget right here, which is actually a 24 seven live chat that you can talk to us, some of our agents if you have any questions and stuff like that. And also we have a knowledge library in here where you can look for any of the articles you want to learn about Techmatics. So yeah. So let's go back to workflows. So for workflows, this is basically the automations that we need to do in order for us to automate most of the stuff inside Techmatics. So this particular uh, particular automation will be about uh, booking reminders. When someone books in a call with you and you want to send out automatic reminders for that booking. So what we need to do is we need to create a workflow. If you already have the template on your account, if you already have it, you can just basically update it. So just create a workflow. And then it will be this recipe right here that's called um, 
this one. This actually has a review request. I don't want that. I just want the to have the plain one. I know. Maybe let's just have that one. Uh, hang on. Just give me one sec. Ah, this one. Appointment confirmation plus reminder because I don't want to send out review requests every after call because, uh, yeah, I don't want to send out review requests every after call. So, yeah, so let's have this exact template. You can definitely find it in your workflow and recipe. So you guys can also use this. The only thing that you're going to change will be the trigger. If you think you have a lot of calendars and you don't want to update the workflow from time to time whenever you create a calendar, you can just stop here. But if you think you will have like custom reminder emails to be sent out from different calendars, what you can actually do is add a filter to your, to your trigger. And the trigger to, would be uh, streamlining or like filtering into individual calendars. So if I want this reminder to be solely for this exact calendar, I can just do that. But if you want your booking reminder to fire off to any of the booking calendar you got, you can just maybe delete this so you can have a generic booking reminder for all of your appointments. So just to maybe explain the structure of the workflows for those who are not familiar yet, this box on top are called trigger. So this is what fire off the workflow. So a trigger could be uh, when a form has been submitted, when a booking has been confirmed, when a message has been sent, um, and so on and so forth. So that could be your uh, triggers. It could be whatever needs to happen before you could send out the actions. And then the actions are this like box right here. And this is what will happen after the trigger has been made. So for example, when someone uh, books a call with you, automatically this confirmation email will be sent. So what you guys just need to do with this confirmation message right here, uh, everything is pretty much all set in here. But if you guys want to customize it with some of the customized message you got, you can definitely do that. Maybe just leave all these brackets right here because these are custom values and will automatically automate into its actual like value. And then 24 hours before the appointment, an email will be sent. One hour before the appointment, another email will be sent to stuff like that. So that's basically how the uh, confirmation or what do you call this? Uh, reminder workflow in Techmatics works. And before you could go live with your booking calendar, make sure to put this in publish. But I won't put this in publish because I'm not using it. I'll just save it. And you should be all good with your reminder. Any other questions? All good? Okay, so I think we're all good. So what we might need to do is we will walk you through onto the new updates we got to the courses. So we have been like previously uh, creating like workflows whenever someone wants to, uh, for example, if you had an offer that you want to maybe um, publish or make it available for everyone who will sign up for just a limited time, for say, for example, you have a membership that would only last for three months. What we usually do previously is we create a workflow to revoke that, uh, revoke that access after three months. But we actually now have a new up, um, update with Techmatics and that would automatically revo uh, revoke the access for uh, the student or for the client for a certain number of days. So if you want to put a deadline, if you want, for example, for this exact membership to be like around like uh, 30 minutes, I mean like three, three months for your students, just turn this on. And this is where you're going to put the number of days that you're going to limit their access to. So for three months, it will be 90 days. After 90 days, automatically their access for the course will be automatically terminated. So yeah. And then another one that we have is also to be in access a specific date. So if you guys want to maybe start selling the course and you're not ready to go live yet, um, we can actually uh, limit the, uh, what do you call this? You can actually start uh, add a start date to your course. Mm -hmm. so this is actually a new update that we got. We'll have a thorough uh, training about how we can work this one out through our Facebook page and also to our YouTube channel. So we can do multiple tests and how we can maybe probably maximize this feature that we got to the offers. So yeah, so I'll just save it. Any questions so far with that update we got for the courses? I good. think we're all good. So yeah, yeah. so for those uh, people who are not, uh, who haven't done 
or haven't like started with the courses yet, let me just maybe give you a quick walkthrough on how to set up your course because we still get like questions about it. And for those who are new in Techmatics, this is a step-by-step -step tutorial or maybe knowing the prerequisite first before you're going to build your courses inside Techmatics. So on courses and membership and in this drop down for the courses here, we will maybe uh, focus on the three menus in this drop down. First is the product. This is where you're going to create your courses. Second is the offers. This is where you're going to uh, create your checkout pages or the sign up links and stuff like that. And settings is this is this is where you're going to configure your courses. So on products, this is how the product builder will look like. So if you want to start building your products or your courses, lesson modules and stuff like that, you can do that under products. So, but I won't like do a deep, uh, like you know a deep. Uh, explanation about it uh, and for the offers this is where you're going to create the checkout link for the uh, for the products so each offers can uh, can bundle up multiple products into a single offer so if you're doing membership you can just bundle up your products in here and set the uh, pricing into maybe a recurring charge a uh, recurring church, uh, charge into uh, for example you could definitely have a can we do monthly here one sec please yeah, you can do daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and a custom date for our recurring subscription for your courses. So yeah, and then for example, if you you have already like built out your product, you have created your checkout page, and you're ready to sell your product, what you're just going to do is just put this offer status and publish, save, and to get the link for this checkout link is you can just click on get link here on top. Copy that link. It, this will be now your checkout link. So this is where your clients or your student needs to fill out the form or need to go to in order for them to have access to your courses. So it, it's actually like a sign up link where they're going to put their information and their card details. And also we can also now collect coupon for your courses. So yeah, any questions so far with that? We good? Uh, yeah, I think we're good. So another thing that we need to set up is we need to go to settings. So this is for the prerequisite of the courses because um, there might be some new updates that we got as of the moment and we actually uh, have already maybe forgot to like give you a refresher about it. So you can maybe just skip these two buttons right here because this is now moved to client portal. So the client portal now has all the basic configuration for the courses. So I'll show you how the client portal looks like in a bit. But let's just go to email settings. So we have three email um, menu here onto our email settings. So first is send welcome email. Second is send drip email. And the other one would be offer access email. So the send welcome email will be the email that will send be sent out to your clients or to your student upon sign up. So if they're a new student and your like membership to your course, they will receive this welcome email. The welcome email consists your uh email and their password and the login link because the password for the users is actually system generated and we can only send it once. Yes, once. We can only send it once. So for example, if it happens that you have an existing stu uh, student to one of your courses or maybe membership that will happen to maybe buy your other courses and stuff like that. We can no longer send this welcome email because we can't send the welcome email twice because it has a system generated password in it. So what you're going to do is you need to turn on this offer access email so that they will also still receive an acknowledgement email after they sign off or af after they sign up of, or after they bought your course. So this offer access email will only include an acknowledgement of what are their um access or what are the course that be that's been added to their portal and it will give the, uh, it will give them a heads up that automatically their client portal will be updated with the new course they sign up for. If you guys don't have this email templates right here please maybe message me at supportedtechmatics.com so I can look into it. So yeah, so that's for the email settings. Uh, let me just head over to website and funnel so I can show you guys the client portal. So the client portal looks like this. Let me just get the client portal. So this is how the client portal, this is where your student can manage all the course they have access to, all the communities they have access to and stuff like that. But it still depends on the uh, subscription you got with Techmatics. 
currently this exact account is currently under um starter plan and this is how it will look like so your student can easily navigate through the system to find where the course is and stuff like that by clicking on certain buttons and stuff like that so yeah and this is how the course would look like and stuff like that so yeah and let me just try to maybe open this in a new tab uh incognito this is how your portal will look like um uh, it's actually already like customized, but this is how the client portal looked like. So before you can maybe launch your courses, you actually might need to update your portal. So to update your portal, you need to go to websites and funnels, client portal and settings, and you might need to update your branding. But before we could go to branding, let's go to domain setup yet. We need to um, add a certain uh, domain into our client portal. As of the moment, we have portal.techmatics.com. Um, if you guys want to add a subdomain to your uh, portal and you're not sure how to work it out or how to add it and stuff like that, I suggest you can maybe send me an email at supportsecmatics.com so I can give you a link to book because it will be really tricky, especially if you're working with A records and stuff like that. So yeah, so this is what every domain link that you're going to add here will be basically the login link for your portal. So this is where your student can be redirected to be able to log into their courses and stuff like that. So yeah. And then next one would be the branding. So just click on branding. Uh, let me just maybe walk you through on where to find this exact details right here. So for the portal name, uh, hang on, let me just try to open a new incognito window again. So this is where you can find those like menu right there. This is where the portal name is. This is where the portal description, this is where the logo is. This is the uh, favicon here on the top, uh, top tab. This is a primary color and we have a banner that will show up into the portal dashboard. And this blue background right here is actually what we call portal image. So it will be this selection right here. So for your portal image, we actually suggest people to maybe have something that maybe in a solid color or maybe something uh maybe somewhat muted so it won't overpower the text for the uh for the portal name or for portal description because as of the moment we don't have um any options yet to update the fonts and the colors of our portal like text in there so yeah so yeah, I think that's basically it for the prerequisite on the portal before you can launch your course. So first, it would be uh, checking your emails first. So go to courses and settings and make sure your emails are turned on. If you have the default template for the emails, you can definitely just use that. No buggy, uh, no biggie about it. You can definitely just use that. But if you want to customize your email with your branding and your social links, you can definitely just um add a custom uh, link template. And another one it would be for settings and branding and domain setup. So those are the three prerequisites uh, that you need to set up before you can launch your course so that everything in your courses and on your membership will be branded with your own branding. And yeah, so I think that's it for me. So yeah, do you guys have any questions about it so far? Nope. Are we all good? So yeah. So I think that will actually sum up our um call for today. So if you guys have any questions, um, just maybe put it on our um Facebook group or you can just email me at supportedtechmatics.com. So yeah. So thank you so much for jumping on with me today. See you next Wednesday. Thank you guys. Bye bye.